Well, good morning and welcome to the online call to prayer for May 6th, uh, 2020. We're so glad you've joined us. Uh, this is Doug Rogers, uh, State Missionary in the Office of Communications and Technology Services. Thank you again for joining us and we encourage you to continue to share this opportunity with others who would benefit from it in the weeks to come. Here to uh, start our time as always and to host our time is State Missionary and Executive Director Rick Lance. Well, let me add my good morning to you as well. We are so glad that you've joined us at this particular time to pray together because prayer is always essential, but we've been made very much aware that prayer is even more essential at this particular time in our lives. Gratitude is our theme today. We've been thinking about praying the Bible, if you will, praying verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Two weeks ago, we focused on rejoice always. Last week, pray without ceasing. And today, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We have several people who will be praying with us and for us. But I want to remind you just simply what you already know, that gratitude is a key ingredient in living a wholesome, healthy, Christ-like Christian life. In fact, gratitude is the language of a Christian, and we ought to speak and pray gratefully. I, I think sometimes, I wonder sometimes, if we said the same things to each other over and over and over again in conversation, if we would be rather boring. Uh, I thought about that in doing a prayer audit recently. Am I saying the same things to the Lord all the time? Are they meaningful, or are they full with filled with gratitude, which needs to be there. That's the language of a Christian. I further considered that, that gratitude is the fragrance of a Christian. Early Christians, when they were meeting in worship, had incense in their worship. We don't have much of that these days, but when they left worship, they smelled like incense. They smelled like they'd been in worship, and that is that they had been with Jesus. And I'm grateful for the fact that, though we're not talking about a literal fragrance, that we can give a fragrant aroma of having been with Christ. And one reason we can do so is that of gratitude. In essence, gratitude is a lifestyle of a Christian. If you wanna know the difference between just coping with life and celebrating life, it's really gratitude. If you wanna know the difference between enduring life or experiencing all that life offers, it's gratitude. That means embracing life. If you want to know what it, the difference between making the most of whatever happens, like right now, or making the best of life, it's gratitude. So to, today, our focus is on giving thanks in everything. Now, Paul did not say for everything. Remember, Paul was in prison, and I don't know that he was thanking the Lord for being, for, for being in prison. But he's, he was thanking the Lord and giving a true sense of gratitude that, that in everything in life, all experiences, the good and the bad, the up and down, we can be thankful. We have a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. So let's begin our prayer time to, together today. And as we do so, I want to call upon Pastor Scott Davis to lead us in prayer as we think about in everything, give thanks. Scott. May we pray together at this time. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. Uh, we bless you, Father, with our souls, Lord, and uh, you are just a, a great part of our lives during this time, Father. Uh, we are, are so thankful, Father, as we are gathered here as a, a group of uh, Alabama Baptists, Lord, uh, thanking you, Father, for uh, the life that's in your son, Jesus. I praise you, Father, and thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, we have life through your son, and uh, it is an abundant life, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Father, as, as our souls uh, bless you, Father, for your forgiveness, uh, for your mercies enduring forever, God, and, and Lord, how you look down upon us, Father, and you uh, have washed away our sins, Father, by the cross. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for healing during this time. We thank you, Father, as we uh, focus during this time on, on so much... Uh, medical uh, problems, Lord. We thank you, Father, for healing, Lord. You have healed so many people of this disease, and 
And we thank you for that, that you are a great God that is our healer. Uh, we thank you, Father, uh, so much for your redemption, Father, uh, that you brought us out of the pit. And Lord, we can, we can praise you, Father, just for uh, redemption, Father, during this time. Uh, we thank you, God, for your love. Uh, we know that uh, your love is far greater than us, Lord, but we respond and, and to that love, Father, with, with great grateful hearts, Lord, and thanksgiving, Father. We, we thank you, Father, for your compassion, Lord, that you uh, look down upon us, Lord, and, and look across this world, Father, and see uh, people that need a Savior during this time, Lord. I pray, Father, that we would have those eyes as well. Thank you for your compassion, Father. Thank you. Uh, for all the good things you're doing in our lives, in our churches, Father, in our communities, Lord, during this, Father. Renew us, Father, with the, that spirit, Father, that, uh, that we would see the gospel above all things. I thank you, Father, that, uh, that our lives have been changed through this. Uh, Lord, we are grateful, Father, uh, for all that you do, and Father, for this gathering of pastors and, and leaders here in our state. I pray, Father, that you would bless each church, bless the ministries, Father, that they represent, Lord, and may we be the gospel, be the light of the gospel of Christ in our world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we think about Alabama, we have approximately five million people who live in our state. Now, we have a, several thousand who have been infected with a virus, and we have a, some several hundred who have died. We cannot even begin to think about what that means to the families who have to give up their loved ones or they be in, might be in the hospital and not be able to see them or visit with them. I've talked to several, more than several in recent days that that's been the case. But I want us to think about for a moment, the 300,000 Alabamians who in some form are seeking higher education one of our fine campus ministers who serves as a state missionary uh, in campus ministry, Beth Gardner, is going to lead us in prayer with a special focus on the future. That is, those who are students, and this is a memorable time for them. This will be their moment, a pivotal moment in history as they look back. All of us will remember it, but they'll remember it more vividly because this is a formative time for them. Beth, would you lead us now in prayer? God, I thank you so much for Jesus. And because of our faith in him, we can come boldly and confidently into your presence, God, and come before you in prayer. And God, I thank you so much for that, Lord. And God, I do just pray for our university students all across our state of Alabama, Father, who have gone through such a major transition in these last few weeks. God, a lot of different emotions as many of them have felt overwhelmed and, and maybe discouraged at times, God. And um, Father, I know many of them right now are even taking exams, um, even this moment as, as we're lifting them up in prayer, Father. So I pray for them and for their professors, God. But Lord, I, I just also thank you, God, for what we've been through, God, because I know even in my own life and in many students that I've talked to, it's created a sense of urgency, God, that they have realized how important it is that they not sit back, God, but they go forth with the gospel and that they proclaim it. God, uh, just testimony after testimony that we've heard of students who are reconnecting with friends from high school and people from back home, God, and that they're being able to have gospel conversations. And Lord, we just rejoice and we thank you so much for that, God. And Lord, I pray for students this summer as they're looking um, at plans and God, as, as their world has just been turned upside down with things that they had, had hoped to do and God, I just pray for them and just for direction in their life, especially for those who had planned to, to serve um, with One Mission students this summer, God. And, and Lord, we also just pray, Father, that they would just continue to know that, that they have been called to live their life every day on mission, God. And so this summer, Father, I pray that you would just challenge and call them out to continue to be a witness for you um, with people that they come in contact with. Father, I just pray all this in your name. Amen. We all know that pastors right now are on the front lines as well as first responders, but pastors are having to deal with their church family in so many different ways. And whether they're sick or ill in various ways or whether they are confined to home shelter in place, I've, I've been calling around talking to pastors and trying to stay in contact with them in text and email as have all of our state missionaries. 
So today we're mindful of our church families. We give gratitude to God that we have a community of faith where we can cling together. I, I really do believe that we take for granted sometimes that we are united in the blood of Christ. Oftentimes people say blood is, is uh, pretty thick when it comes to family. But when you think about it, the blood of Jesus Christ unites us in an even greater way than bloodlines and family connections. Terrence Jones, one of our outstanding younger pastors who has been a church planter pastor for a number of years now, is going to lead us in prayer. And as he does so, let's join together heart to heart in remembering those who lead us as shepherds faithfully during this time. Terrence? Dear Lord, we just thank you, um, Lord, for your church. And Lord, at this time in particular, we are um, extra grateful for the promise that Christ made concerning the church, that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Lord, we thank you that we can cling to that promise that even during times like these, um, that you are working and the forces of evil, um, the, the way sin have corrupted uh, our world uh, are no match for um, the blood of Christ and the church that you have purchased with your own blood. So Lord, we rejoice today that in your perfect plan and design, you have given us uh, local fellowships of believers that gather together. And Lord, even times like these, we thank you for uh, technology um, that allows us to be um, connected. And so Lord, as we um, do physical distance, um, Lord, we thank you for the reality that we don't have to be socially disconnected as uh, pastors and leaders of churches are figuring out creative ways to uh, get together. Lord, we rejoice uh, over the creativity of um, the pull-up services with the radio, uh, the phone calls, the text messages, the Zoom calls. Lord, we rejoice in those things and how you've given us um, this chance to cling to one another. Um, Lord, we thank you for um, those faithful shepherds uh, all across the state of Alabama who are, um, are even in this midst of, of not knowing and um, Lord, not being able to plan far into the future uh, as many of us are used to doing. Um, Lord, we thank you that uh, for those who are trying to figure things out and day by day holding on to your hand as you lead us through uh, this time. Um, Lord, may we remember that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear evil, uh, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff, uh, they comfort us, Lord. And so, God, we just pray uh, for pastors. Um, we, we thank you for uh, their faithfulness. We thank you for those who uh, are bivocational and who have to work. And, uh, Lord, some of them we know are even struggling in their own finances, and yet they are still uh, trying to lead your people. Uh, some of them have great financial burdens at home and in the church and are still trying uh, to keep your people encouraged, still trying to preach uh, your word. And Lord, we thank you that during this time where uh, we're bound up and we're quarantined, your word is not quarantined and that your word is going out with great power. And it seems as though, God, your word is even going out uh, with, in, a, in greater capacity and more and more people are hearing uh, sermons from pulpits that they otherwise wouldn't hear uh, through social media and things like that. And Lord, we're grateful that the hunger for your word is going up as Bible sales are growing up. So Lord, we beg you that you would show us how we can take advantage of these opportunities. And like Paul, who spent many nights in prison and found himself bound, may we rejoice uh, that your word is never bound. And Lord, may we rejoice that it will never return void. So give us as pastors and churches uh, the strength we need to endure this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, and everything give thanks. That's the theme of our prayer time this morning. I want to express gratitude to you. I want you to know I don't take you for granted. I am glad you spend a few minutes with us on this Wednesday morning and every Wednesday morning. As we look toward next week, we're going to be thinking about what the Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 7. 
just to abbreviate, he said, be serious and watchful in prayer. I think sometimes we don't take prayer very seriously. We probably are now more than ever. And remember also Simon Peter knew what it meant to be watchful. So next week is, as we gather together, reach out and contact someone else, someone else who may need to hear prayers on their behalf or be a part of a virtual prayer meeting. This is the time for us to gather in every possible way and thank the Lord that despite the circumstances of life, he's still on his throne. To close out our time together, we are delighted to have one of our veteran Association of Missionaries, Eddie Garner. He will close us in our time of prayer. And as we do so, let's again give thanks in everything. Eddie. Let's pray together. Lord, today we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for sending your son to rescue us from our sin. We thank you, Father, today for our salvation. Thank you for your promises that we find in the scripture, that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. We thank you that you walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. We thank you for being the great I am. We thank you for being our God who is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We thank you for being our God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you, Lord, that you tell us to cast our anxiety on you because you care for us. And Lord, today with prayer and supplication, we let our requests be made known to you. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, we thank you that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we walk with you in faith through times like this. We thank you for drawing us closer to you and to each other during this pandemic. And Lord, we will be careful to give you all of the honor and the glory for all that you have done and all that you will do in our lives and in our churches through this very challenging time. And now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Until we meet again next Wednesday morning, remember, have the attitude of gratitude. It's a difference maker for the Christian, and therefore you can make a difference in other people's lives. God bless you. And I'll look forward to joining you again next Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock.